Sing this with me. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Sing it again. Here we go. God is so good. God. I usually don't start a sermon that way. So if you're new to Vertical, my name is Jason, and I'm the lead pastor, and I never start a sermon that way, probably the first time ever. But today is a different kind of message because we're talking about a song in the Old Testament. In fact, let's go ahead and put that on the screen, Psalm 92, verses 1 through 3. You can open your programs or open your Bible apps or your Bibles and follow along with me. And it says this, it is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name. The writer here is talking about singing and making music to the Lord. It says, O Most High God or O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. So we see an all day type of event happening in the life of the writer saying it is good for us to praise the Lord, praise the Most High through music, through song, and proclaiming God's love in the morning and faithfulness at night. And then look at this, this to the music of the ten string lyre and the melody of the harp. Now we don't use those instruments today on stage, but back then in the temple, that is what they used along with other instruments as well. So today we're in a series, it's part three of a series we're calling Back to the 90s. And the reason we're calling it that is because we're going back to the Old Testament, the front part of the Bible. The Bible is divided into two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. We're going back to the Old Testament to a book called Psalms. Everybody say Psalms. So in the book of Psalms, there's uh, a section of uh, books or a section of chapters called the 90s. And that's the section we're going to be in all summer. So week one, we're in Psalm 90. Week two, Psalm 91. And today, Psalm 92. Two. And so as you can tell, we'll be going through Psalm 93, 94, 95, 96 until the summer is over and then we'll start a new series. But today in back to the 90s in Psalm 92, this is a psalm that is actually a song that was written to be sung on the Sabbath. In fact, in all of the entire book of Psalms, this is the only one that is called a song for the Sabbath. In other words, it's meant to be sung in church. And so today, as New Testament believers, here we are in the New Testament church, 2022, and we are 2,000 years or more past this, way past this, and we are reading it today, and as we read it, some of you look at that, and you're like, I don't like to sing. How many of you raise your hand and say, I don't like to sing? Just go ahead, admit it, come on. Some of you are like, you're just afraid right now to admit it. I get it, all right? But I just want to calm everybody's fears today because some of you are like, I don't like to sing because I sound bad. Anybody with me? You're like, I just sound bad. I don't want to sing because if I sing, then my section will just split and everybody will run away. (laughs) In fact, somebody said that's why we have the music loud at vertical so we can't hear each other sing. (laughs) Be like, oh, no, you know. Uh, some of you, you feel that way, especially men. Sometimes as men, we're like, some of you are like, you're like, I can't believe Pastor Jason just sung like he's a man. I didn't know men do that. Like sometimes we do. All right. Uh, and, and here's my point today is that we should be, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, we should be people who are willing to lift our voices in song to the Lord. In fact, the Bible even speaks of making a joyful noise to the Lord. And for some of you, when you sing, it is a joyful noise, but that's Okay. Because God, he hears it. 
He sees it, and it warms his heart, and he loves it. You see, we serve a God who's a jealous God. You see, for us to be like, I'm jealous, that's bad, because we're, there, are other peop- there are other beings that are greater than us, but God is the greatest being of the universe. He is it. He is at the top, at the pinnacle. For him to be jealous, it's okay, because there's nobody greater than him. And so he says, I am jealous for you. I am jealous for your worship. I'm jealous for your song unto me. When the band sings up here, I want you to know it's not a performance, but some of us, we treat it like that. We're like, man, the band was good today. Wow, the band was good. Can we just give them a hand, though? They are great, right? They put a lot of time, they put a lot of effort into what they do up here, but they don't do it to perform for you. They do it to lead us to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the God of the universe. That's why we do it. So if you're new to church, you're like, why do they sing? Because God told us to. God told us to sing to him. And in our culture, it's not a common thing for people just to sing out. Now, sometimes people sing, like I said, you sing in your car, you sing in your shower, and you may, not, you may be embarrassed to sing out, and not everybody sings on stage and all that kind of stuff. That's okay. Today, I want to talk about praise. In fact, if you open your programs, again, look in, the, in there, there's a definition of praise. It's going to be on the screen. It says this, praise is simply this, the expression or approval or admiration for someone or something. So if we talk about God and praising God, we are showing and expressing, what are we expressing? Approval for him, admiration for him, love for him, saying we give everything that we are to you. And one way we praise is through our voices. It's through singing. It's through lifting up a song unto the Lord. Yeah, can we praise in other ways? Absolutely. In fact, when I'm preaching right now, I'm praising God. When you're listening, you're praising God. When you act out what the Bible says, you're praising God. When you live a life of worship and service, you're praising God. When you serve your neighbor and love your neighbor as yourself, you're praising God. But today we're specifically talking about praising with our voices in song unto God. So the rest of our time together, I want to talk about this. Why we praise. Why do we praise? Why do we as believers in Jesus praise? Why is it so important as we go through this psalm? Number one, write this down inside your programs. It says this, we praise Jesus because of what he has done. What he's done and then what happens? Which gives us breakthrough in our current problems. We praise Jesus for what he has done, which gives us breakthrough in our current problems or situations. Some of you today, you maybe have walked in here, you're watching online right now, and you're going through some stuff. I don't know what your stuff is that you're going through, but God knows it. And he sees your heart, he sees your life, he loves you, he cares for you, and he wants to break through in your life today. If we allow him to do it. The reason we praise is because we praise God for what he's done, and when we do that, We see breakthrough in our life. You see, there's power in praise. Everybody say, power in praise. There's power in praise. When we praise God, there's breakthrough that happens in our life. Let's go on in the chapter here in verse 4 and 5. It says this, for you made me glad by what? Your deeds, Lord. Why, Why do we praise Jesus? Because of what he's done. You made me glad by your deeds. I sing for joy at what your hands have what? Done. There it is. God, look at what you've done. You are good. You are so good. Look at what you've done. How great are your works, Lord. How profound are your thoughts. As we sing unto God, something happens around us. In fact, sometimes we just need a praise break. Everybody say praise break. It's like we just stop whatever we're doing and we just Praise God. Why? For what he has done, and then the breakthrough happens. In fact, let's do that right now. All right, here we go. Let's sing it again. Here we go. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's yeah. To let's stand to our feet right now. Here we go. Stand up. God is so good. Sing it out. 
God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Watch this. We can even say this. Listen. He answers. Sing it out. He answers our prayers. He answers prayers. Yes, he does. <laughs> he answers prayers. Why? He's so good to me. God is so good. One more time. Here we go. God is so good. God is so good. God. Give God a hand right now. You can be seated. Now, what we just did right there, ladies and gentlemen, you can do all throughout your life. You can stop whatever you're doing, sing a song of praise to God, and what happens? You start to just start to, this, the situations around us start to disappear. Like, they're still there, but we're not focused on them anymore. The circumstances of our life that are, that are not going so well, what happens? They're still there, but we're not focused on them anymore. What are we focused on? We're focused on the goodness of God. And the writer here is telling us, as God spoke through him and to him, for us to preach and talk about it today, many, many years later, he's saying, listen, it's been all throughout the age of the Old Testament, through the New Testament age, and even until now, if you want breakthrough in your life, praise Jesus for what he has done. Stop and have a praise break and watch what happens in your life. It's amazing what happens. Now, as, as we go forward, I want you to write this down. We can also praise Jesus because in the end, he and we win. He and we win. That's right. In the end, Jesus wins. And in the end, because we're with Jesus as believers, we win as well. You're like, what do, what do we win? Well, let's look at the writer. He says here in Psalm 92, verses 6 through 9, the next three verses. He says, senseless people do not know. Some translations are like stupid people. I thought this was a better one. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> senseless people, or another translation was brutish people. And I thought, well, that's the 90s. For those of you that wore brute, you know what I'm talking about, that cologne. <laughs> Some of you are like, what are you talking about? Google it. It's good cologne. The ladies will love you. Anyway. Since those people do not know, fools do not understand, and though the wicked spring up like grass, and all the evildoers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. Whoa. I love the psalm. Sometimes it's like, oh, God, I praise you for the flowers and the trees. And, blah. and other psalms are like, destroy my enemies. Make fire fall from the sky and burn them alive. They don't say that. I just made that up. But the point is, it's like it goes from one thing to another. I love how it does that because that's how we are, right? Like one minute we're like, oh, this is great, this is great. Oh, my goodness, why are the evil flourishing? Why is the wicked, why are they getting away with everything? Why in the world is all this bad stuff happening around us? Why can't we do anything? You ever feel that way? In fact, in about three weeks, I'm preaching through one of the songs where the theme is this, how long, O oh Lord? Like how long are you going to allow this to happen? In fact, today as we look at this, it's kind of a precursor to what we're going to see, and we see it all through Scripture, where writers would ask, God, God, how long are you going to allow the wicked to flourish? How long are you going to let evildoers do what they do? I mean, come on, let's look at the world around us. How long will we let human suffering go on, God? How long? Where are you, God? We've all asked this question. We've all thought this. You, me, all of us. And he says this. Let's keep reading. He says this. But you, Lord, are exalted forever, for surely your enemies, Lord, Surely your enemies will perish. All evildoers will be scattered. Wow, man alive. I'm telling you, that is, it's, it's harsh, it hurts, but it also gets me excited. Because here's why. I love people and God loves people. And I want everyone to come to know Jesus. But we know the truth, that there are some that are going to harden their hearts and in the end they will be separated from God forever. But ladies and gentlemen, you're watching online, you're here today, 
I just want to reach out to you today, and actually not me, but God is reaching out to you in love, and he's saying, I came, I gave my son Jesus for you because I want you to have a relationship with me. He does not want you to perish. He does not want to scatter you. He does not want to destroy you. He wants you to flourish with him for all of eternity. But you can't do that living the way you're living. You can't do that living in yourself. You can't do that living away from God. You see, the the Bible here talks about enemies of God. Some of you walked in here today or you're watching online, you're like, well, who's an enemy of God? Well, the Bible all throughout tells us those who are not in God's family are enemies of God. You say, but I haven't really made that choice yet. Well, you're an enemy of God. There is no fence. You're either on one side or you're on the other. And for those that have crossed over to the other side, you were once an enemy with God, the Bible says. You were once dead in your trespasses and sins, right? You were once like this. All throughout the Bible we read this and we see this language. We were once like this, but praise be to God through Jesus Christ. He has delivered us into the kingdom of freedom, right? Like we see this all throughout Scripture. But ladies and gentlemen, here's the big deal. Some of you watching online, some of you here today, you're over here. And one day it will be too late. One day you will be on the enemy's side and Jesus will come back or you will breathe your last breath and it will be over. There will be no more repentance for you. There will be no more hope. But praise be to the God of the universe. He sent, because we were at war with him, we were enemies, he sent the Prince of Peace, Jesus, who said, I am going to sign the peace treaty forever with my blood. And he signed the peace treaty with God and you, if you believe in him, forever. So what's that called? I know there was a lot of like mirrored language there, symbolic. Basically, it's called salvation, becoming a Christian. When you go to God and you say, God, I'm a sinner. I believe I've sinned. I believe I can't get, I can't get better on my own. I, I make mistakes and I'm, I'm not good. I need you. I need a Savior. When we do that, And we say, God, I believe in your son Jesus, that he died on the cross. And God, that you raised him from the dead. The Bible says you will be saved. And so right now, some of you need to believe that. And in just a moment, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to guide you in that prayer. And when we do that, we become part of the family of God. We're no longer enemies. We're no longer separated. We're no longer outside the family. We're in the family. And when that happens, we are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's a great, great, great thing. But in the end, listen, if you're in the family of God, you win with Jesus. In fact, let's go to the back part of the Bible, the very last book called Revelation. In Revelation, The third chapter from the end of the whole book says this. This guy named John, he had this vision of the future. It was a prophecy. He foretold the future. Now, we know, okay, before we get into this verse, we know that the Old Testament uh, had prophecies, and every one of them had been fulfilled about the first coming of Jesus. If every one of the prophecies of the Old Testament have been fulfilled about the first coming of Jesus, that means that every one of the prophecies about the second coming of Jesus will be fulfilled. Now let me remind you, when Jesus came the first time, he came as a little baby in a manger. All right? Oh, little baby, look at the little baby. Oh, look at you. You got to change your diaper. Isn't that funny? Jesus had to get his diaper changed. Anyway, I just think that's funny. Anyway, some of you are like, so rude. I know. Anyway, little baby Jesus. Then he grows up. He heals the sick. He raises the dead. He goes out and he calls these 12 disciples. He dies a criminal's death, but completely innocent. He rises from the dead and ascends into heaven and says, I'm coming back one day. Then John, he saw the future of when Jesus was coming back. And he wrote it down to tell us about it so we could be ready. Look what it says. I saw heaven standing open. Imagine this is John. And there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. 
He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him. So imagine these armies of heaven following him, riding on white horses, dressed in fine linen, white and clean. And then here's back to the rider of the horse. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. Well, how long, O oh Lord, will the evil nations prosper? How long, O oh Lord, will this nation invade that nation? How long, O oh Lord, will you allow dictators on the earth? Here it is. He's, here it goes, to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. And look at this. On his robe and on his thigh, he has his name, this name written, King of kings, Lord of lords. Who is this writer? His name is Jesus. This is the second coming. This is the second coming. The first time, he's a little baby. The second time, he comes with a sword coming out of his mouth. Do you understand this? With his robe dipped in blood, with written on his thigh. I guess it's a tattoo. I don't know. King of kings, and it sure ain't a sharpie. King of kings and Lord of lords. And the Bible says he rules with a, with a, with a soft hand. No, with an iron fist, with an iron scepter. What does that mean? It is the ending of what the writer said in the Old Testament, that your enemies will be scattered, that the evil will no longer flourish, and we will be separated. And then here's what happens. There's going to be about a thousand-year reign. Jesus will rule the earth, and he will do away with all the evil. There will be judgment day. And at judgment day, if you are not written in what's called the Lamb's Book of Life, if you have not received salvation, you will be cast away from him forever. Look what the Bible says in the next chapter. Anyone whose name was not found written, in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire, which we know as hell itself. Whoa. And I listen, in today's modern Christianity, you may not hear much about this. But I feel like I, I gotta tell you, if the front part of the Bible is telling us that the enemies will be scattered and that, that they will not flourish forever and they will be destroyed by the Lord, well, the New Testament tells us how this is gonna happen. It's by Jesus coming again. It's by in the end, he wins. And if you're on his side, you win with him. So, so how do you get your name in that book? <laughs> I want to be it, right? Here's how. By salvation. What I just explained a moment ago. By God, I'm a sinner. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins and be my Lord and Savior by committing your life to him, by somehow surrendering to him, whatever it was in your path, on your life, where you said yes to Jesus, Jesus writes it down. The Lamb's book of life. It's shut, and then at the end of time, it will be opened. You go before God. Oh, this one's mine. Come on in. What's your name again? That's why the Bible says in another part, I never knew you. He don't know you. He says, depart from me. I never knew you. You see, we praise Jesus because he wins and we win. And third today, we praise Jesus because he gives us joy even in the midst of tribulation. He gives us joy even in the midst of tribulation. He says it like this in the passage. He says, you have exalted my horn like that of a wild ox. You, fine oils have been poured over me. So this is the writer saying how he's done this. And then he says this, my eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. Even in this life, sometimes we see the defeat of the enemy, don't we? Praise God. We, we do see that sometimes. Not the complete defeat. In fact, some of you, you think that uh, the Bible says that um, uh, vengeance is the Lord. But some of you think that vengeance is yours as you post on Facebook. <laughs> but it's not yours. It's the Lord's. And here he says, I've seen the defeat of my adversaries. My, my ears have heard the rout of my wicked foes. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. We know what palm trees are, don't we? They will flourish like palm trees. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. That's another type of tree that they had. And it was a big, big tree, a strong wood that they built things with. The temple was built, all these things. He said, planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green. What's that mean? It doesn't matter how old you get. If you're with the Lord, you can still bear fruit. <laughs> Isn't that good? I'm getting older. That's, that's years ago I read that. That wouldn't even, even apply to me. 
Now I'm 45, and it's like, ooh, I'm on the downhill. I'm good. That's me right there. They will stay fresh and green. Proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. In other words, this song that he's telling us to sing is telling us to give honor to Jesus. Because he didn't know the name of Jesus, but that's who it is. Give honor to Jesus. Why? Because he, we have seen the defeat of our foes. Because we are planted like a strong tree. Because we are like a tree planted in the ground. When the winds come, when the storm comes, we're not going to be blown over. Because I will flourish in the courts of God. In other words, even though I live here, even though I'm in this fleshly body, I can still flourish in the courts of God. That I can still do great things for God. Uh, because when my body fades into old age, which I just talked about, I can still bear fruit and see goodness. I can praise Jesus even though the world is tough, even though the world is evil, even though my body's in pain, even though my friends are in turmoil and my family's going down the drain, I can still praise God. Why? Because God is so good. So let's, let's sing it again. We're having another praise break. Yeah. Here we go. Are you ready? God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He answers prayers. Answers prayers. He answers prayers. He answers prayers. He's so good to me. I got another verse. It's not on the screen. We're just gonna make it up as we go. He's coming soon. Huh? Yeah. so good. He's so good to me. One more time. God is so good. Here we go. God is so good. Sing it loud. Ready? God is so good. God is so good. He's so good. bow your heads right now and close your eyes right now in this moment. No one looking around. You see, right now, in this moment, the Holy Spirit of God, because He's a good God, is reaching out to some of you who are the enemies of God, who are not in the family, and He's providing a way into the family right now. He's asking you to say to God and admit in repentance that you are a sinner and you have sinned that you're turning from that sin, that you believe in the resurrection, that you're giving your life to Him. It's called salvation. With every head bowed and every eye closed and no one looking around at this moment, if that is you, you say, Jason, I want to become a Christian, a follower of Jesus right now. I want you to pray with me this prayer and mean it with all of your heart in this moment. Say these words to God. Say, dear God, I know that I am a sinner. I believe you sent Jesus. I believe He died on the cross. And I believe you raised him from the dead. Please come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. And be my Lord and Savior. I commit the rest of my life to you. Please fill me with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now look at me all across this room and even online right now. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, if you're here on campus and you've got a program and a connection card, pull out that connection card and on the back of the connection card, let us know about your decision. I pray to become a Christ follower. It says it right there. Mark it for us and let us know. If you did not get any of that, 
you can text the word follow to 928-440-9500. If you're watching online, text the word follow to that number. Fill out the form. We'll send you a salvation packet in the mail. If you're here on campus, you didn't get a card, you can either fill out that, or excuse me, text that word, or you can scan the QR code on the seat backs right in front of you. Go ahead and do that right now because God wants us to let the church know about uh, the decision that you've just made. And as well, we want to give you a Bible. That's what we'll send you in the mail if you're watching online. But we want you to have a Bible as you leave today on tables that look just like this. And all week this week, I want you as a church, I want our theme to be this. God is so good. I want you to sing it in the morning. I want you to sing it tomorrow night. Maybe even gather your family and sing it. Maybe what you say, I don't know how it goes. Google it. Or, or we'll have this online later. You can watch it online back. Whatever. whatever. You, you just make it up. The point is this. The holy God of the, crea the creator of the universe, <laughs> he wants to hear your voice sing out to him. And when we do, breakthrough happens. We acknowledge his lordship in our life and the lord of the future. And we realize in the midst of our tribulation, he will bring us great joy. So this week, I want you to read Psalm 92 every day this week, the one we just read. In fact, on the back of your connection card, maybe you can write and mark that. It says, I commit to read Psalm 92 every day this week. But at this moment, I want to pray for you. Let's all stand to our feet. Because I realize that as Christians, uh, we get discouraged sometimes. And even in this moment, as, as we're here today, some of you have walked in here and you're just... You're kind of struggling. Maybe you're struggling in your relationships. Maybe you're struggling in your finances. Maybe you're struggling in your emotions. I don't know what it is, but we struggle as believers because we do live in an evil world. And we look around, we're like, how long, oh Lord, are you going to let the evil prosper? How long are you going to let this go on? But today I hope that you have received hope. And I want to pray that you receive that hope right now. So let's bow our heads right now and close our eyes. And I want to pray for you all across this room and online today. Father, in Jesus' name. Among us today, Lord, there are some that are struggling. And God, I pray that they would feel your goodness from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. That right now in this moment, that they would feel your goodness and your presence. Let your love pour over them just like liquid falling from the sky, drenching them from their head to their toe inside and out, Lord. I pray that you would wipe out all the anxiety that's in this room. Lord, the worry, the stress. Lord, for those that are caught up in addictions, whether it be behavioral stuff that has to deal with uh, pornography or drugs or alcohol, set them free in the name of Jesus. I pray for healing over sicknesses and diseases right now. Even in our midst, Lord, there's some that have been diagnosed with certain diseases and they feel like there's no hope. I pray that you would give them hope and healing right now in peace in the name of Jesus. I pray that you'd put marriages back together, Lord. I pray that the singles would find their joy and hope in you and not in just hopping from relationship to relationship. I ask right now that the theme of us as the vertical church as we go into the city this week be God, you're so good. Say it with me, church. God, you're so good. Say it again. God, you're so good. Good. Lord, I pray right now that people would have the courage to even go to the vertical room, the prayer room today and receive prayer if they need it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing and worship with the band. Hey guys, Mikey here. Have you ever wondered how you can give here at the Vertical Church? Well, today I'm going to show you how. It's simple. No matter if you text, give through the app, or visit our website, it will all take you to the same giving destination. Let me walk you through it. One way you can give is online by visiting vertical.church slash give. It's simple. To give now, click the Give Now button and fill out the payment information. We recommend making an account by filling out the basic info and setting up recurring giving. Another simple way to give is by texting the word GIVE to 928-251-4441. Click the link and follow the simple instructions. Or if you have the vertical.church app, you can simply open the app, click connect, and click give. It's that simple. 
On a Sunday, you can place your offering in the envelope provided and then place it in the offering bucket as it is passed by you at the end of the service. You can use the postage paid envelopes provided on Sundays. All you have to do is drop it in the mail. Or you can send a gift to our address. Thank you for your generosity as we continue to build God's kingdom and seeing more people become the hands and the feet of Jesus.